guys, welcome back to my channel today. In today's video, we are going to be doing a little Sephora haul. Now you guys, moving into 2020, Sephora hauls are going to be a little bit more purposeful and not so much just like frivolously spending all this type of money and adding to my collection that may or may not be products going to waste if I keep adding stuff and not actually using everything. This is something that I feel like is really important for me in 2020. I'm not sure about you guys, but I do see a lot of you guys doing little 2020 no buys and low buys and things like that. And I would say I'm probably on a low buy myself. I will do a hits and misses video in the future once I have tested these out thoroughly for you. So without further ado, let's get on to the first product that I've recently picked up from Sephora. So the first product I picked up is actually a new purple shampoo. One thing for me that's important is to actually pick up a purple shampoo to help tone my color. And I have really been enjoying the Fenola brand purple shampoo, but I do find that it's a tad drying. So when I do use that one, I have to mix it with regular shampoo or like a hydrating shampoo because it'll be a little bit too drying on my hair otherwise, but it is very effective at toning. So this one is what I'm gonna try out next, and this is the Amica Cool Your Brass, no, Bust Your Brass, there we go, Cool Blonde Shampoo. This is one that has a bit of a fragrance to it. Let's see. Yeah, it smells like, what's the word? P purple shampoo, basically, with like a bit of sweetness to it. So it does, it does have a bit of a fragrance for sure, but this is something that I have heard some good reviews on, in particular that it's not as drying as some of the other ones. So I will keep you posted on this. Let me know if you've tried this one or anything else from the brand, but this is a fun brand. It has a lot of really cool product design on their packaging. Like this is really beautiful and cute packaging. So I'm excited to test this out. Now the next product is actually something that I got a idea from you guys on one of you saying that you wanna to try to cut back on like makeup wipes and cotton pads and things like that. So this was recommended to me and this is the makeup eraser. Now this is a cloth, you guys. <laughs> it's very, very interesting. The one that I picked up has like a watermelon kind of design. I did take it out of the packaging already because I wanted to see how big it was, but this is like a plush cloth. So I'm very interested to see how this works. It says you can machine wash them, which is really good. And I think that's mostly why I wanted to take a look at them because it would definitely reduce all the waste that comes from makeup wipes and cotton pads and things like that. And right now in my routine, I do use a micellar water with a cotton pad when I take off my makeup with a first cleanse. It's really cute and plush and soft. Like it's adorable. The original one is just a pink color similar to the Beauty Blender pink, like that kind of pink color. But this is really cute and they do have some additional patterns as well. So let me know as well down below. What do you think of this? Is it worth it? Is it kind of a gimmicky thing? I'm really curious. Now the next thing that I picked up is actually a product that was inspired when I did my video where I reacted to Madeline Pesh's uh, 38 step skincare routine or beauty routine or something like that. It was absolutely insane the amount of steps that she has in her routine. But one thing that she used that really caught my attention was actually from Super Goop. And this is the Daily Correct CC Cream from Super Goop. Now for my Canadian viewers, I did have to order this through the uh, Sephora US site just because Super Goop is not a brand yet that is carried as Sephora. Canada. This is what the Super Goop packaging looks like. Now my lights are going to dim this right down because whenever there's like a matte white against my studio lights, it makes it look like it's basically nothing. So this is a light blue and white container and it has... 1.6 fluid ounces in here. I thought it was fairly affordable considering that it is a base product and it does have titanium dioxide and zinc oxide as the mineral sunscreen components. So it does have a sunscreen, which I appreciate. And I was kind of looking for a lightweight CC cream type style product that I can just use when I'm on the go, not necessarily filming for the day and doing a ton of makeup or heavy base makeup. This looked absolutely beautiful on Madeleine's skin. So I did want to take a look at it myself. The only thing is that the shade range is pretty limited. I believe there's like fair, light, light, medium, medium, deep or something like that. Like it's not a ton. So that's the only thing that's really too bad, but I will keep you posted on this and I'll let you know how it wears. And if I do think it is worth the money. 
All right, now let's talk about a cleanser that I just picked up. Now, you guys know that in this year as well, I've become very cautious of the ingredient lists in my skincare. And I have been telling you guys about product lines and things that are in skincare. And one thing that I did want to kind of reiterate when I talk about skincare in particular is that... I find that when I'm talking about a certain product, it happens to be your favorite product. <laughs> Sometimes you can be like, well, I'm going to use it anyway, blah, blah, blah. That is totally okay with me. I'm just telling you guys and letting you know that based on my research, sometimes we have our beloved skincare products that might have some potential irritants in it. So if you do happen to get a reaction and you don't know why, perhaps that might be it. So like I said, I'm not trying to get you to <laughs> hate me or hate the fact that my product knowledge has exposed a potentially not so great ingredient in your favorite skincare product, but I just wanted you to be aware of them because if I had information like that and I withheld it from you, I would think I wasn't doing my job right. Anyways, this is a cleanser that I did pick up to try and I do have a beloved cleanser that I'm gonna show you guys in an upcoming skincare routine, but this is one that I wanted to see if it would be another option for you. And this is the Ordinary Squalene or Squalene Cleanser. Now this is super affordable because it is the Ordinary. So I will keep you posted on this. This is a, let's see, brassy kind of taupey um, color packaging. It's going to look a little bit lighter, like I said, in my... Uh, camera here, but it's actually a little bit of a deeper gray slash taupe color in person. And you do get 50 mLs of the cleanser, which is really nice. The one thing I did like about this was that it doesn't have fragrance in it, and it also doesn't have the irritating essential oils that can be in certain cleansers as well. So moving forward, I do want to be able to offer you guys, for those that are incredibly sensitive and have maybe some skin concerns, maybe an option for a cleanser. So this is one that I've heard some good things about. So I'll keep you posted on how it performs on my skin. Next, we are going to get into two lip products that I picked up recently. And lip products are another thing that I'm trying to cut back on a little bit because I do have a ton of lip products in my collection already. But one thing that I wanna do is as a reviewer, I wanna be able to test out certain formulas for you. So when there's a new formula that I hear a ton of you guys talking about, I do wanna pick up one or so just so that I can get a bit of an idea as to how they perform. This is the new Lawless Cream Lipstick. Now I'm a fan of the Lawless Liquid Lipsticks. It's actually one of the few liquid lipsticks I actually prefer because a lot of them are super dry, but the Lawless ones I do like. So this is the packaging here. It's kind of like a matte black and it is really, really gorgeous. It has a bit of like a magnetic closure. I'm not sure if you can get that. There you go. Maybe the sound will pick it up. I would say that the packaging is more plasticky than I would like it to be, to be honest with you. Like it's a little bit plasticky in nature, but that's not a deal breaker for me as long as the lipstick is good, but it's a very lightweight kind of plasticky matte black packaging. Now this is the shade I picked up. It's called Wedding Day. It is a gorgeous shade. I'm just going to kind of swatch it for you on my hand here. But this is a gorgeous wearable everyday pinky nude. And there we go. You can kind of see it on my hand here. Now this is obviously a pink that I feel like a ton of us have already. So <laughs> not something overly unique of course, but these are definitely wearable shades, which makes sense why Annie would start with these first because they are the shades that we go through and wear all the time. And I am not mad at it. I'm excited to test this out and see, but I am really excited because this is like a satin finish. It's not a matte finish. I do like the matte revolution lipsticks from Charlotte Tilbury, but there's not that many mattes that I like besides that one. So I'm excited to test out this Lawless one as well. Okay, now the next lip product is one that you've been asking me about ever since I did my Charlotte Tilbury video. And this is the Charlotte Tilbury Collagen Lip Bath in Pillow Talk. This is one I wanted to try out and it did arrive this morning. So I'm excited for that. This is the packaging here, very luxurious. It is, of course, the Pillow Talk shade that we've come to love. This is what I would say the maybe original Pillow Talk shade is. This isn't the same as the Pillow Talk Medium or Intense. This is definitely lighter than that. One thing I wanna tell you guys right off the hop, I do have it on my lips today, and I do like the fact that it's not a sticky, thick kind of glossy formula. But the one thing that I find that's a little bit interesting is the packaging of this. You do notice that there's like a heart at the end of the wand and it can actually get kind of stuck in the tubing. So 
it looks kind of like this. It's like a heart. I'm going to zoom in for you guys as well and show you. But this like tends to get lodged. Like when you're pulling it out of the container right here, it just kind of like gets stuck and then you get a string of product. You almost get too much product on your applicator when you're doing that because it's kind of getting stuck and then it's kind of taking some product with it. So then you get a ton of product on your wand. So just be careful of that. That's already something that I just noticed kind of like made me a little irritated at first that I can't just like take it out. So like, you know, effortlessly, it just kind of gets stuck most likely from the shape of the tip of the applicator. So just keep that in mind, but it is the lip gloss that I am wearing today and I'm going to swatch it right beside wedding day here. So here we go. It's been a while since I've used a collagen lip bath. So I'm trying to remember if that heart thing pissed me off the first time. <laughs> <laughs> or not because I just had a clear one last time so this is about two layers of the collagen lip bath you can see that it has the pillow talk shade it is more of a muted sheer kind of color though you can build it up on the lips you can leave it a little bit lighter so that's really beautiful the collagen lip bath formula is not meant to be a super pigmented formula in my opinion it is much more of a sheer put over your lips on the go kind of gloss type thing that she's got going on so this is very interesting i will let you guys know what i think of it and how it wears throughout the day in a future hits and misses. The last thing I picked up recently is of course this Pillow Talk palette from Charlotte Tilbury, along with all of the Pillow Talk Medium, Pillow Talk Intense products that she's recently expanded her line with. So I will leave a link in the description box for my Charlotte Tilbury video if you haven't seen that stuff yet. But I did a whole like hits and misses with the expansion of Pillow Talk and basically gave you all the deets on what products to pick up and what products basically to skip on. So this is is what the palette looks like on the inside really gorgeous you guys very good for wearable everyday shades the mattes are fantastic they're buildable they're smooth they're easy to work with the shimmers are as well I just love her palettes I think they're very like beginner friendly and just great for all levels basically there are some formulas out there that can be more finicky with like primers that you use or brushes that you use and that's all fine and dandy if you have a lot of makeup knowledge but if you don't and you're just looking for a quick and easy palette that you know you don't have a ton of skill let's say but you want something beautiful she's always really good with that so I do love this palette and of course if you want to see all the other things I picked up I'm not going to do a full long rehash of everything because I did do it in my Charlotte Tilbury video, but go take a look at that video if you want to see everything else. What do you guys think of all the products that I picked up from Sephora recently? Do let me know all your thoughts down below. Also let me know if there's anything that you have your eye on that you'd like for me to review. I will check it out the next time I'm in store or online. And until my next one, guys, take care. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys. But sorry, there's a light inside of us. It shows the way.